Now this video is meant to give you an introduction a little bit into the biology of the estrogen receptor system. The estrogen receptor is an excellent example for the structure function relationships of proteins. We have very good structural data for important functional domains of the estrogen receptor. It's a good starting point. The estrogen receptor is also an example for the challenges in structural biology, as we only have structural information for parts of the protein, not the whole protein. You may find out why that is during this exercise. Together with other data from functional and computational as well as comparative approaches, we can use the structural information to understand the multitude of functions of the estrogen receptor in its ballet with other proteins and DNA. This has been used to improve the drugs that we use now for decades to intervene um, with the estrogen receptor biological functions in healthy people as well as in people with diseases. So, in summary, the estrogen receptor example allows you to explore the fundamental questions in structural biology. How do we obtain structural information on proteins or even complexes of different types of biomolecules? In this case, we're dealing with the interactions of DNA, proteins and small molecules. The small molecules, in our case, are hormones, steroid hormones and the analogous artificial compounds. Why are we interested in structural information? How can we use structural information to understand molecular, cellular and physiological processes better? And ultimately, how can we use all this knowledge to develop better drugs and actually to improve the fate of our fellow men? Back to the biological aspects. Estrogen is an important, even essential hormone, conserved in huge parts of the animal kingdom. More specifically, in healthy humans, estrogen is well known to be essential for the development of the reproductive system. Also, the gender determination, fetal growth, as well as growth in general. Less well known are the multitude of functions that estrogen has in relation to metabolism and a host of other cellular functions. These diverse activities of estrogen can often explain the many side effects we observe when we use drugs to intervene for one reason or another at the physiological level with the functions of estrogen. Part of the biological functions of estrogen is mediated by a family of related estrogen receptors, of which the human estrogen receptor alpha is a well-analyzed member and is subject of this exercise. The estrogen receptor alpha acts as a transcription factor. As such, it has to bind specifically to DNA. It is well known that the estrogen receptor, in absence of hormone, is a monomeric protein. As soon as estrogen binds to the receptor, it dimerizes and it's such dimers that bind specifically to DNA. The estrogen response element, the DNA sequence the estrogen receptor binds to strongly, is very similar to the sequence of the glucocorticoid receptor, and yet the receptors bind specifically to their respective DNA sequences. These sequences are imperfect palindromes and the difference between the glucocorticoid and the estrogen response element is a mere 4 base pairs out of 18. So they are very similar. You will analyze the structural basis for this specificity with the aim to gain some understanding how nature solved the problem of finding the position of a couple of specific sequences, we're talking maybe of a hundred in the whole genome, in the background of around 3,000 million base pairs. On a 3 meter long molecules altogether, coiled up in a tiny nucleus, and all these happens within seconds. How is that actually possible? Next to mediating the functions of estrogen that I mentioned earlier, the estrogen receptor plays a pivotal role in the development and treatment of most breast cancers. In essence, the human estrogen receptor alpha is expressed in about 75% of all breast cancers, and its presence is one of the most important factors in choosing a treatment regime for the patient and predicting the outcome of this widespread cancer. If the cancer is still dependent on estrogen for its maintenance and growth, we can use this as a weapon. So expression of the estrogen receptor generally correlates with a better prognosis for the patient as we can treat the cancer with estrogen antagonists. These estrogen antagonists not only prevent the estrogen from binding to the receptor, they also induce an inactive structure of the receptor. The combination of these effects makes it impossible for the estrogen receptor to further support the growth of the cancer cell, which in turn is of course very positive for the outcome of any treatment, be it by steel or laser, immunotherapy or chemotherapeutical treatment. Antagonists mimic part of the function of the natural agonist for the receptor. In case of the estrogen receptor, estrogen is the natural agonist, activating the receptor. 
The antagonist, in this case tamoxifen, binds to the same region of the receptor as the agonist. However, instead of inducing an active conformation of the receptor, the antagonist stabilizes an inactive structure of the receptor, effectively knocking out the function of the whole hormone receptor system. You will look in detail in the structural changes and similarities um, of estrogen receptor hormone binding region bound to estrogen or tamoxifen. You will directly see what an active versus inactive conformation looks like and what the consequences of this might be. If you have any problems with any aspect of this exercise that you could not solve in the tutorial or by using the additional resources for this exercise, please contact me directly with your specific problem. I will try to solve your problems or find somebody else who can help you.